Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock News in Bahrain International with me, Keith Johnston. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, received today at Kadebia Palace, His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, where they discussed a number of local, regional and international topics. During the meeting, the Royal Highnesses affirmed His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's role in reinforcing relations between Bahrain and other friendly countries, stressing the government's keenness to cooperate with other countries that share Bahrain's development orientations and that aim at promoting security and stability and combating terrorism. The Royal Highnesses affirmed that Bahrain is aware of the current challenges and the required regional and international coordination and is keen to intensify coordination and cooperation with various countries for the security and stability of the region. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the weekly Cabinet meeting today at Gadebia Palace. The Cabinet congratulated the winners of the UNESCO King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa Award for the use of information and communication technologies, commending the role of this prize in employing ICT to develop education. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister directed to implement 14 projects in the Southern Governorate and appointed the Ministerial Committee for Urbanisation and Infrastructure to study 11 developmental projects in the Southern Governorate, as well as to speed up the completion process of three ongoing projects in the same Governorate. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister noted the importance of the 13th Middle East Conference and Exhibition of the Geological Sciences, GEO 2018, which was held under the patronage of His Royal Highness the Premier and inaugurated by His Highness the Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. He also hailed the exhibition's organisation and success, as well as the increasing participation of international oil companies and specialists in geological sciences. The Cabinet also congratulated the winners of Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry, BCCI's election, and affirmed the government's support to commercial and industrial sectors represented by BCCI, highlighting its role in supporting the Economic Development March. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister decli declined for stricter control over some types of treatments that may be misused for the purposes and are criminalised by law. He instructed the Ministry of Health to do so in coordination with the relevant authorities. His Royal Highness also directed to take precautionary measures to prevent avian flu in the country. The Cabinet lauded the results of the visit of His Royal Highness the Saudi Crown Prince, First Deputy Prime Minister and Minister of Defence, Prince Mohammed bin Salman Al Saud to the United Kingdom and its role in strengthening relations between the two countries. In the light of the recommendation of the Coordinating Committee, led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, the Cabinet approved a draft law on reorganising and bankruptcy and referred it to the Legislative Authority. The Cabinet approved Bahrain joining the agreement to establish the Asian Investment Bank in Infrastructure and referred it to the Legislative Authority. The Cabinet approved the ratified the third protocol of the Free Trade Agreement between Bahrain and the United States. 
The Cabinet approved to amend the Memorandum of Association and Policy of the Bahrain Stock Exchange, which includes the addition of a mechanism for electronic registration of shares to simplify the procedures and amend the jurisdiction of the Board of Directors and Executive Management in relation to vacancies and board meetings and deferring responsibilities. In order to develop the quality of health services in the government and public health sector and reinforce competitiveness, control and transparency to ensure optimal utilisation of resources, the Cabinet discussed forming two national committees that include representatives from government and public health sector. The Cabinet referred to the Legislative Authority a draft law amending certain provisions of the Child Law based on the proposal of the Council of Representatives. The Cabinet discussed two proposals presented by the Council of Representatives on the stagnation of water in Lozzie areas and the examination of expatriate labour. The Cabinet discussed two reports submitted by the Minister of Interior on participating in the Arab Interior Ministers' Council held in Nigeria and the meeting of Interior Ministers of the International Security Coalition held in Abu Dhabi. The Cabinet was also briefed on the report of the Minister of Foreign Affairs on the results of the 149th Ordinary Session of the Arab League Council, which was held in Cairo. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today received the President of the World Jewish Congress, Mr Ronald S. Lauder, at Gadebia Palace. During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted Bahrain's tradition of respectful co ordination between different religions and faiths, as well as the leadership's commitment to promoting peace and stability. His Royal Highness also highlighted His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's recent royal order, establishing the King Hamad Global Centre for Peaceful Coexistence, remarking that this step reflects His Majesty's personal commitment to promoting understanding and dialogue on key interfaith issues. His Royal Highness welcomed Mr Lord's visit to Bahrain and emphasised the importance of building bridges among cultures and faiths. For his part, the President of the Jewish Congress expressed his gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of the Bahrain Athletics Association and Honorary President of Bahrain Sports Federation for Disabilities, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at the Palace officials, partners and sponsors, the Supreme Organising Committee, who contributed to the success of the Bahrain Strongest Man Championship. Also present at the meeting were the Chief Executive Officer of the Bahrain International Circuit, Sheikh Salman bin Isa Al Khalifa, the Assistant Secretary General of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and Secretary General of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, Abdurrahman Sadiq Aska, the Assistant Chief of General Security for Operations and Training, Brigadier General Sheikh Hamid bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, the Under Secretary of the Ministry of Information Affairs, Mohammed Baha, and a number of officials in the ministries and representatives of companies and sponsors. The championship was held under the patronage of His Highness Sheikh Khalid and was organised by His Highness's media office at Bahrain Bay. The event's proceeds were allocated to support cancer patients and charities, which comes as part of His Highness's initiatives of supporting sports and humanitarian fields. His Highness Sheikh Khalid welcomed the guests and conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Highness Sheikh Khalid expressed his thanks and appreciation to the audience for the support on the championship that witnessed the participation of 750 players and 152 participants in the main challenges making these statistics the highest on the international scale. His Highness added that this support for the event received reflects the sponsor's patriotism, evident by the facilities provided. His Highness continued to state that these initiatives aim to strengthen social ties and cooperation and emphasise patriotism among the youth, as well as the encouragement to exercise sports, citing it is an important way to avoid a disease-free life. At the end of the meeting, His Highness Sheikh Khalid honoured the partners and sponsors who contributed to the event's success, which was followed by honouring the winners of the first three positions in the photography competition, which was held on the sidelines of this tournament. His Highness also presented a commemorative gift to the President of the Eastern Reefer Club, Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, for achieving first place in the category of medium weight. For their part, their sponsors expressed their happiness for having such a role in supporting His Highness Sheikh Khalid's initiatives, citing it as a national duty that everybody should contribute to and achieve its noble goals.
Commander in Chief of the Berean Defence Force, the BDF, Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, received today at the General Command a military delegation from the Nasser Higher Military Academy from the Arab Republic of Egypt. Headed by his Director General, Safwat Sadiq Al Dib, on the occasion of his visit to the Kingdom. The Commander in Chief welcomed the Egyptian delegation and reviewed with them Bahraini Egyptian relations and ways of enhancing them to serve military cooperation between the two countries. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, deputised Deputy Premier and Vice President of the Civil Service Board, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, to attend the graduation ceremony of the first batch of the Public Management Masters Programme, held by the Bahrain Institute for Public Administration, BIPA, in cooperation with the French Axe University, the French National School of Administration, Tamkin and the University of Bahrain. Sheikh Khalid affirmed His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa's keenness to support Bahraini youth as they are an essential part of the Comprehensive Development March. He affirmed launching the Public Management Masters Programme in 2016 and the graduation of his first batch reflects the keenness of the government and led by His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and the President of the Civil Service Board, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to invest in human capital and develop national cadres and qualify them according to the best international practices. The Deputy Premier expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince for patronising the graduation ceremony of 22 employees from the public and private sectors. He noted that development government work through the various studied and organised means will have a significant impact on the development of BIPA. He added that the efforts of the Civil Service Board contributed in raising the percentage of achievement in the 2015 to 2018 Government Action Plan. Sheikh Khalid praised the efforts of the graduates, encouraged them to contribute in developing their work environments and contribute to the consolidation of elements of sustainability in their performance. Sheikh Khalid commended the efforts of BIPA and the development and training programmes it provides. He also praised the Public Management Masters Programme for graduating competent public and private sector employees. During the ceremony, Director General of BIPA, Dr. Raid Mohammed bin Shams, gave a speech in which he praised the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince to the Public Management Masters Programme, affirming that His Royal Highness follow up to the process of government work and his vision in developing government pr performance was BIPA's motivation to launch this distinguished academic programme. A number of graduates also gave a briefing on the graduation projects. Sheikh Khalid then honoured the graduates of the programme.
The Government Server Centre's Evaluation Committee, formed at the Directive's Office, Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, convened today for its fourth meeting. Chaired by Information and E-Government Authority, the IGA Chief Executive Officer, Mohammed Ali al Qaid. The committee reviewed and finished the evaluation process of the first batch of 47 services centres affiliated to 11 government bodies. al Qaid said that enhancing efficiency in government services centres is consistent with the government work programme and the outcomes of the government forum. He pointed out that the special evaluation will be an important factor for upgrading the services of the government sector through a number of developmental initiatives. He praised the positive feedback regarding the guide of evaluating the government service centres, which adopts the foundations of efficiency, development and the use of modern concepts in work. The committee also reviewed the mechanisms facilitating the logistics work of the team and discussed the developments of the online system, supporting the evaluation process. Good evening and welcome to the business news on Bahrain International. I'm Bara Abdallah and let's start with the local stocks as Bahrain All Share Index has closed at 1,353.28 points, marking a decrease of 14.61 points below the previous closing. The decrease was in the commercial banks and investment sectors, and investors traded mainly in the commercial bank sector, representing 65.14% of the total value of shares traded. Results indicated that 77 equity transactions took place with a volume of 2,594,539 shares worth 638,976 Bahraini dinars. A press conference was held today announcing the final arrangements for Bahrain Property Brokerage Expo 2018 to be opened next Wednesday under the patronage of the Minister of Works, Municipal Affairs and Urban Planning, Islam bin Abdullah Khalaf. More in this report with Hiba Abdul Ghaffar. The Property Brokerage Expo 2018 is organized for the first time in Bahrain, aiming to narrow the gap between the supply and demand in the residential and commercial real estate market, serving as a platform to gather the seller and the buyer under one roof. Encourage Bahrainis to uh, enroll in the real estate and property uh, market. They can uh, become investors themselves, st start their own businesses in this uh, field. Uh, we are getting also the strategic partnership with Tamkin that they are uh, offering uh, Bahrainis, Bahraini companies like brokers and developers to come and join. The Expo's main objectives are to attract and facilitate GCC property investments in the Bahraini market, gather property brokers, property developers, service providers and financial institutions in order to showcase existing and future properties at competitive prices, create a productive platform where real estate investors and professionals can meet and interact, moreover, provide real estate practitioners with training and development opportunities in property investment and brokerage. The idea is to have a professional, licensed, officially authorized dealers, developers and contractors uh, who offer their products under uh, this roof. It's over 20 exhibitors we have and we expect about more than five to 6,000 uh, customers and uh, visitors. It also motivates GCC and Bahraini investors to expand or even start their careers in the real estate market aiming to strongly contribute to the growth and development of the real estate sector in Bahrain. The real estate community celebrates the opening of the first of its kind real estate expo, gathering property developers, managers and brokers next Wednesday. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffour. The Bahrain is set to take part in the Riyadh Travel Fair 2018, Saudi Arabia's leading travel industry showcase, when it opens its doors in the 10th consecutive year on April 10th. 
The four-day event will become the focus of business networking opportunities, insightful seminar sessions, ministerial discussions, and the recognition of the 12 months of the tourism industry's achievements. The 2018 edition will be the largest on record, with an increase in both of the number of exhibitors and expected visitors' arrivals. More than 270 exhibitors will be present, representing more than 50 countries. Over 50 national and regional pavilions will have a prominent presence, with a show floor space also increased by 10% compared to 2017 event.